Hi, my name is Mark, and this is the love of my life, Aja. After retiring from the Army in 2018, my family and I moved from the States to my wife's hometown of Szczecin, Poland. She followed me around for 18 years, so now it's only fair that I do the same for her. She runs a Polish cooking food channel and blog, and I lift the heavy things. Once in a while, she shuts down the kitchen, and we explore Poland together to find as much good food as we can. Welcome to Kitchens Closed. Hello, my honey friends. Hi. It's Friday in Kitchens Closed. Today on Kitchens Closed, we are going to go out and about in Gdańsk. In the beautiful tri-city of Poland, Gdańsk. Yeah. Gdynia and Sopot. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to show you all them things because this isn't just a one-part video. This is a two-part video, right? In the first part of the video, or in video number one, I guess. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you what to do in Gdańsk when you're here just for one day. Just for one day. But if you have two days, what can you do with two days? Now we partnered in this video with the Radisson Blue of Gdańsk, which is located right here in this beautiful building. So what do you say we go check in? Yeah, let's go. Right, let's go. Shmaini's pulling all the bags. The well, filming's a hard job. You know, babe? My job's hard too, I'm filming. While well, you pull the bags. <laughs> We've been told that we're Let's on the fifth. Trick. We're on the fifth floor. See, it says right there, 508. But the there's no the stairs. There's we're no the fifth. We're on the private floor. <laughs> there's no way, right? It says next stop four. Uh, okay. uh, maybe it's this other elevator. This one's got fifth. <laughs> We're in the wrong okay. elevator. We're good now. Let's see, what number is it? Oh, wait. A five or four. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Wow. Madison, you know exactly how I like it. So here we are at 508. Come on in, let me show you around the Radisson Blue Hotel that we got here the room. Okay, so coming in is our living room and seating area, complete with coffee station. So in the mornings you can have a cup of joe. Ooh, fancy. Over here is where we will write our many books and poems about Gdańsk. Lounging in the evenings on our wonderful couch with an assortment and selection of chocolates and strawberries that are delicious. The first TV set. Huh, the first. There are two. The other one is here in our master suite. Isn't it beautiful? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous with a view that is not so damn bad. Come check this out. That is what we're going to wake up to every morning, folks. 
you, Edison Blue, for spoiling us. <laughs> yeah, we really appreciate it. We're going to enjoy our room now. Yeah, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. morning. <laughs> Time for breakfast. Let's eat. Let's eat. And we're off. To the like, great Union Wand yonder. To the great Union Wand yonder. <laughs> Chip. Yeah. We haven't done a travel chip in a while. Travel chip. Travel chip to a tourist information center. Yeah, because they know all the information about they tourizing. Know, they know all the secrets. Yeah. What we're hoping for is that there's a boat that's running. To a certain place. To a certain place. We'll show you a little later on in the video, but we're really hoping for that. Well, let's get a map. So let's go get a map. So since our audio took a <clears throat> again, which is a well-defined Polish kitchen tradition, we're going to try to recreate what we're saying here. So we got a map. Yep. And basically what we're trying to explain is that on your one day in Gdańsk, we're going to try to show you this area over here in this general this vicinity. general vicinity. And the, the right here is where the information center is. Mm -hmm. And then this long street is called Dwugi Targ, and it takes you all the way around the main old town area. Yeah, and then there's a river and boats and such. So we're going to show you, we're going to go down the Dwugi Targ street, and then we're going to go over here to where, the uh, over here too, this is where the Amber Alley is. And then over here is where the river is. Yeah, and with lots of restaurants and such and so forth. And then, then Mark is asking me something, but I can't remember what it was. It's probably where um, the food is. And I said, I don't know yet, but we have to wait for that. Well, I don't like waiting for food. So, so then we're going to try to get on the boat. Yeah, and where's the boat going? And the boat is going to take us to this... A historical monument, and then he's asking about food again. He's going to take us to historical monument uh, that is very, very important, and we have to go quick because of the boat. To Westerplatz. To Westerplatte. To Westerplatte. See, you're buying tickets, and we're going to get on a boat to Westerplatte. But we have to be quick. And the two tickets, see, I have them here, and we will show them to the guy when we go to the boat. And they uh, cost 65 zloty a piece, which is about 
Uh, hold on 10 minutes. And then see, we have to move, do the hand movement. And then quick, and the boat is right here. It's right there. See, there's the boat. Quick, quick. follow me. Right, let's go. You know what I love most about traveling this time of year? It's empty. <laughs> Look at all that emptiness. What, what month is it? October. We're just barely in October. Barely. And to me, traveling to Poland in September and October and also April, May are probably the best times. It's the shiznit. So if you have freedom to travel in September, October, even early November, that's the way to go. I hope we don't vomit. You could also get to Westerplatte by road. Mm -hmm. If you're here and just flown in, you don't have a car, this is a great option when, uh, to take the boat, I mean. Yeah. But there's also a, a city bus that you can take. But that's what we're trying to do is show you guys how to do this. If you come here, you fly and you don't have a car, you can still get around and do things. Yeah? Yeah. You want to see the port? Yo. The city of Gdańsk is located on the Baltic coast of northern Poland. With a population of 470,621, to be exact, Gdańsk is the capital and the largest city of the Pomeranian Voivodeship. It is Poland's principal seaport and the country's fourth largest metropolitan area. As I mentioned in the video opening, Gdańsk is one of the tri-cities of Poland that include Gdańsk, Gdynia and Sopot. An important shipbuilding and trade port since the Middle Ages, in 1361 it became a member of the Hanseatic League, which defined its economic, demographic, and urban landscape for several centuries. In the 16th century, Gdańsk experienced its golden age, and thanks to its grain exports, became one of the wealthiest cities in Europe. In the 1980s, Gdańsk was the birthplace of the Solidarity Movement, which played a major role in bringing an end to communism in Poland, helped precipitate the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact. I'd be lying if I didn't say I didn't want to be on the pirate ship, though. I kind of do. It's pretty cool. I don't care, it's awesome. Yeah, right. Made out of steel and plaster. <laughs> to this day, as you can see, the cranes are used for both loading and unloading cargo and repairing vessels from around the world. The lady is saying that it's uh, a little bit of a walk. Westerplatte is a peninsula in Gdańsk, Poland, located on the Baltic Sea coast. From 1926 to 1939, it was the location of a Polish military transit depot sanctioned within the territory of the free city of Danzig, now Gdańsk. It's famous for the Battle of Westerplatte, which was the first clash between Polish and German forces during the invasion of Poland, and thus the beginning of the first battle of World War II. The Polish garrison's size was set at 88 soldiers, and Poland was not allowed to build fortifications or bunkers. Over the years, the Poles constructed clandestine fortifications. Unfortunately, these were not very impressive, and there was no real bunkers or tunnels, but only five small concrete outposts or guardhouses hidden in the peninsula's forests. With tensions rising in early 1939, the garrison was placed on high alert. On September 1, 1939, at 4.48 a.m. local time, the battleship Schleswig Holstein was on a courtesy visit, quote-unquote courtesy visit, to the free city of Danzig. Without warning, opened fire on the Polish garrison. Soon after crossing the artillery breach brick wall, the attackers were ambushed by the Polish defenders with small arms and mortar fire from concealed and well-positioned firing points. Another two assaults that day were repelled with the Germans suffering unexpectedly high losses. 
Over the coming days, the Germans repeatedly bombarded Westerplatte with naval artillery and heavy field artillery. Repeated attacks by 570 German soldiers were repelled by the 180 Polish soldiers for seven days. Major Henryk Sucharski had been informed that no help would come to the Polish army. Cut off with no reinforcements or chance of resupply, he continued his defense, keeping the main German force stalled at Westerplatte and so preventing further attacks along the Polish coast. On 7 September, the Major decided to surrender due to lack of ammunition and supplies. As a sign of honor for the soldiers of Westerplatte, the German commander, General Ebhardt, allowed Major Sucharski to keep his sword while being taken prisoner. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, see? this is definitely an old bunker. Yeah, I'll see. Here, hold the, hold the urine camera. <laughs> Don't step down there. Yeah. Someone peed on that. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. You Someone it. came down here and said, "Ha ha, watch me." I'm going to pee on the handles. Ew! <laughs> well, now I got pee here. So my guess is, is that that watchtower, who would watch out for bad guys, in case of incoming artillery or some kind of explosion-y things, mofos would run down here and hide their asses down in there until the explosion stopped happening, and then they go back up and tell people what was happening. That's my guess. Cause this was all built before WW2. So yeah, that's my guess. The Westerplatte Monument, also known as the Monument of the Defenders of the Coast, was constructed between 1964 and 1966 to commemorate the Polish defenders of the military coast depot, Wojskowa Składnica Transitowa. The construction of the monument was initiated by the Council for the Protection of Struggle and Martyrdom Sites and consists of 236 granite blocks transported from the quarries at Sztergom and Borów. Inscribed for all to see on the monument are the words Glory to the Liberators. The shape of the monument is intended to resemble a jagged bayonet impaled on the ground in order to show the resolve of those who fought and died in this small strip of land. Seven candles are carved at the foot of the monument symbolically represent the seven days of heroic defense of Westerplatte by Polish soldiers against the numerically superior Nazi German army. The ruin you see in front of you is a destroyed barrack that got blowed up in 1939 when the German boat started schusting at the poor bastards. Conveniently, right across from it is the come by my shop. But never mind that. Let's go check this thing out. We're gonna go check out this. We almost passed it by because we gotta get the next boat in 15 minutes. But I've gotta check out this ruin. For all those who are lost inside of it, I do feel for you and your families. This is amazing to let you in. This would never happen back home. Holy sh. You look at that. That's a staircase, y'all. Goodness gracious. That's terrible. Imagine being inside here. When that all came down onto concrete and rebar. Can we get down further? Sorry, I have to hurry, guys. Holy crap. We hurried our butts up and got back to the boat and floated all the way back downtown. As we left the boat, we turned north towards Ulica Mariacka, which is also known as the Amber Street. We 
You see, Gdańsk is known as the center of amber in Europe. Why? Because they have lots of it. That's why. So people take it and they make jewelry out of it. Beautiful necklaces and rings and bracelets and brooches and anything they possibly can, as you can see here. Much of Amber Street was destroyed in World War II, but instead of rebuilding it with new stuff, they dug around all the different neighborhoods and put it back together in the way you see it here. The most notable relics on the street are the ornate gargoyle rain gutters and the detailed railings. As you can see, they're very lovely. We left the Amber Street and headed over to see a giraffe. That's right, a giraffe. Brama Jurav, or Giraffe Gate, is a historic port crane and one of the city's most recognizable buildings. It is the largest and the oldest surviving port crane of medieval Europe. The restored crane you see here was originally built between 1442 and 1444. Since its construction, it has served primarily as a port facility for loading goods and ballast onto ships and for erecting vessel masts. The mechanism consists of two pairs of tread wheels with a diameter of about six meters each. People walking inside these drums were used as human gerbils that raised and lowered the thick hemp rope. The device was able to lift two tons to a height of 27 meters, or after coupling both pairs of wheels, four tons to, to a height of 11 meters. The crane was set on fire in 1945 when the city was captured by the Red Army, and the wooden part was completely destroyed. The gate was reconstructed at the end of the 1950s, and on December 18, 1959, the crane was entered in the Register of Monuments. Enough of all the history now, eh? Yo, it's time for food. We found this little small milk bar, Bar Mlechne, just probably about a thousand yards from the big elephant. Yeah, but, but what's a milk bar? Milk bar, as you can see, is all great and homemade cooking so it's like grandma's at, at a fraction of a price <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's kind of like a diner but for like inexpensiveness yeah great food pretty cheap probably half price of uh some of the restaurants or maybe a third of of some so you can see some kopitka some dumplings some nalishniki and potato dumplings and pierogi we opted for some uh, beef and pork patties with beets and some rosso chicken soup and I ordered platski ziemniaczane potato pancakes so that wasn't so bad huh yeah, oh so bar, bar mlechna look yeah. it up there right there yeah this pretty good oh, oh right. no what happened Did I get it on where right here no maybe they dropped something I don't see it <laughs> <laughs> we just got bombed by the local pigeons anyway anyway is, i was gonna say this is where normal people eat yeah you yeah, see yeah. i was a student sitting there that looked like a student yeah a guy a youth was, a youth a guy that looked like was just on break from work yeah a couple of uh road workers yeah a grandma grandma all spectrum of the world it is because it's good food wholesome food at very fair prices 10 bucks for all for two of us to eat very, come on very fair, yeah. yeah so if you're in poland any all the cities have them in it yep. bar, bar now some of them are say they, they're bar mlechna, but they're kind of expensive yeah. so you got to find the ones that are real right not the bs ones <laughs> so all right so on to more sites Blah! with our bellies full we headed north towards neptune's fountain fancy fancy Neptune's fountain was first constructed in 1633. Then in 1634, a big old fence was put around it and some eagles were put on it. A renovation was completed between 1950 and 1954, but in 1988, a cheeky little fig leaf was added 
to cover up his hoo-ha. So wait, wait, wait. You're saying that for centuries, no one cared that the genitals are showing? Nobody cared about the penis uh, until 1988. 88 yeah. did it. Well, 88's, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? Got it. There you go. You know what the problem with all the tourist sites in the world is? Tourists? Tourists. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of ironical, isn't it? But every every time you go to a touristy site, you're like, oh, the people suck. Well, you're the people too. <laughs> so <laughs> what I don't like is, see this? Where is this? They're selling these little yappy dog things. Like next to this beautiful thing, they're putting their come buy my shit stuff. But that's not a tourist. I know, but there's, I just don't like it. Anyway, beautiful fountain, eh? All right, what's next? Food. Again? Sure. Oh, I thought it was a Targi Hall. <laughs> With food. Oh, food at the Targi Hall. All right, let's go. <laughs> One might say, yeah. Mark, Yes. you're not showing us any museums. That is a true statement. We're not showing you any museums. Why? Because she hates museums. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea for the video was to kind of give you an outline of the downtown area. Yeah. Which I don't know if we did well or not. Probably not. But we're also not uh, professionals. And then when you get here, you look at the map. You go to the tourist center mm -hmm. and you decide what's best for you. That's right. The best for us today was a boat ride. Boat. And we did, really wanted to see Vester Plata. Yes. And um, stroll through the downtown area here. Mm -hmm. There's a gorgeous church right behind us. There is. That we didn't go to. No. Because we would rather go to the market. True statement. Where we're going right now. Where we are. And we'll probably get some fresh plums because they're in season. <laughs> so when you're visiting here, get, get a map. Yep. And decide on your own. I think that's really good advice. High five. Yeah. That's a travel chip. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, keep walking. The magnificent building that you see in front of you is called the Hala Targova, or in English talk, that means like shopping center. Now there has been a shopping area or a market on this place since the 12th and 13th centuries. In 1227, a church that was adjoining this area was given the land over to a Dominican order which built a monastery on the site. The monastery was destroyed during the siege of Gdańsk in 1813 and as a result of shelling by the Russian Prussian troops. Prussian authorities did not allow the reconstruction of the monastery. The monastery stood in a ruin for over 26 years, but in 1839 to 1840 they pulled the ruins down and made an empty square here. They used it for a military drill site and also a city market. In 1894 it was decided to build a brand new shiny market hall, and it was put to use in August 3rd, 1896. After it opened, the city of Gdańsk just canceled every other market in the city to make sure that everybody came to this thing, which is kind of a jerk move, but hey, what are you going to do? In World War II, it survived mostly with a little bit of damage to one of the attics and some bullet holes here and there that were easily repaired. After the war, the hall wasn't used very much, and in the 1960s, they even talked about building it down and making a supermarket here, but it was saved because it was part of the Register of Monuments. In 1999, they did a big old renovation on it, and it looks as pretty as it did in the day they built it. Pretty cool building. So how's that? How's what? <laughs> <laughs> how's your one day in life? Tiring and delightful. How was yours? What's his favorite part? Um... I'd have to say my favorite part was, I like the architecture. 
and the oh, and the okay. boat and the boat ride. I like the boat ride. Boat ride was probably my favorite because you get to see all the architecture, both the fancy stuff that's out there, and then you get to see like the industrial part yeah. with the cranes and the big ships. Where and normal people are. Where normal people are. Yeah, yeah I like that. What was your favorite? I like the boat ride. The boat? I, I liked. Uh, I really liked the down, the old town dynasty too. It's really, yeah. really gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. So if you have one day, that's my ideas is the, some things, little some things to do. <laughs> I only had the one bit, not even. This is, but this time tomorrow next week, we'll show you if you have another day in Gdańsk scary what you might be able to do. Think right. of, think of like, day trips mm -hmm. type of a gig. No. That's our episode, friend. Oh, that's our episode, friend. <laughs> Jump over to www.polishyourkitchen.com. You can check out recipes by this beautiful lady over here. All, the, re all the recipes are in there. All Everything of them. Everything that you probably ever want to cook as for Polish, as Polish food, food yep. are on there. Yep. Some of them are not that great. <laughs> <laughs> that's not but true. But they'll teach one. you how to cook. They're wonderful. <laughs> uh, there's a book out by that if you want to. There's merch if you want a sweatshirt. You can do that. If not, just watch the videos. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Do it again. That's quality beer. <laughs>